hi what's up everyone thank you so much for the support over here i absolutely love helping you guys out i absolutely love sharing with you guys the information that i have because i want to make sure that we all get into the industry i feel like the beauty supply industry is there's enough room for everyone if you if this is really something you're passionate about there's space for you as well i can help you open a beauty supply store i'm providing this information here on youtube for free so if you can you know like the video leave a comment subscribe on the channel i will really appreciate because it helps this video get to more people who will also benefit from it um it's the least you can do i apologize that i haven't posted in a while but i have two small kids and right now they are sleeping so i hope it stays that way so i'm able to finish this video and put the content out yeah. mistakes new beauty supply store owners do or make in their first year of business this is because i have probably dealt with uh, about five beauty supply owners who have made these mistakes and i feel like you guys if you decide to go ahead and open the beauty your beauty supply without any help from a consultant at least at the very least uh, try and avoid these mistakes because it's gonna cost you okay and um i understand there's ridiculous people out there who are charging like thirty five thousand um consultancy fee uh, uh, do not do that okay do not do not do that if you're going to have someone consult for you please do your due diligence make sure that they are a reputable company this is very easy to do just go on google look them up go on better business bureau look them up if there's a lot of complaints please steer clear and then don't also go ahead and sign contracts with consultants who are saying give me your money i will buy everything for you don't do that because i would like you to build the relationships with your vendor so if you're with me as your consultant i'm not going to take your money i'm not going to go ahead and reach out to the consultants and open their account for you and order for you no what i do depending on the package i will go ahead and reach out to the vendor get to know who is going to be your sales rep and then send that information to you so you can reach out to them set up your account get opened and start ordering i want you to have that relationship with your vendor because it's going to help you long term when they have sales you'll get to know that when um your account has ordered enough you can start getting terms with the said vendor you can get 30 days so you can receive your products sell for 30 days and then pay them 60 days 120 days i want you guys to form that relationship with your vendor anyway i have digressed but please just do your due diligence i know there's another you know other people who are helping you open stores and they don't have stores they, they're not running their own stores so how are they helping you how do they know what's happening in the market how do they know how the ground looks like you know running a successful business they're helping you but they don't have a business you guys i i really hope you're doing your market research i hope you're finding out who these people are before you give them your money okay um let's just get into the business so mistake number one do not hire a consultant who um doesn't run up their own business who is opening stores and asking you to send them all your money no let, let's not do that please do not do that there's another mistake that beauty supply owners do in their first year is you're not paying yourself so i don't mean like put yourself on a salary because maybe your business cannot be able to support that as of right away but at least at the end of your first year um try and get some dividends being the store owner at least get something out of it because when you're not paying yourself at some point in the business thinking you'll pay yourself back you cannot backdate that you cannot say like in the first year of business you guys never paid me i want you to get you know unless there's really something that you've put up where the business has to pay you back at some point like say you're giving services to the business uh for it to be paid after two years something like that but it has to be in writing you cannot just decide that at some point in the future it's, uh, when you're opening your store if you're not planning to be at the store and you decide to have an employee you need to hire right to use a friend or if you're going to use a family member make sure it's proper hire process like get get set up with a payroll service system make sure you're getting you're paying that uh, they're paying their taxes right away do not do like cash 
or things like that people will not respect your business as a reputable business because people out there are not getting into business uh jobs where they're just getting paid cash you know the government is going to come after you so please hire rights uh, what people are doing is fill their store with stuff they cannot sell you're probably you know thinking this looks nice this looks like a product my clients would want in the future and you go ahead and buy all these things and then they come this thing in your store they're not selling is not what's popular in the market please do not do that do not buy things based on how you feel or based on how you imagine the market looks like um this is where a consultant really comes in because they are going to tell you what to order what sells what's popular um if your consultant is not helping you with that <laughs> you're not hiring the right consultant so please find someone who's going to tell you what you should order something that's going to move something that's selling for your area the next thing is what new beauty supply owners are doing is you're buying stuff from a store that's closing you don't have enough knowledge you know in this industry it's different if you're if you're a black person like me and you consume beauty supply products like me you cannot go ahead and just buy products fill up a store you know you need knowledge like you need to know um these products that this beauty supply is closing that they have are these products they bought last year two years ago five years ago ten years ago you know it could be a line that's already discontinued by the vendor <laughs> or an expired you know or an outdated product do not do that so do your research make sure that these things you're buying are actually still currently popular and currently selling do not make that mistake do not think that a store is closing you're gonna get good deals and then buy all the stuff buy products and these products have already expired or are just about to expire so you're going to have expired products on your shelf please when you're planning to buy anything from a store that's closing find out if it's a good deal Come on, I'm here. That's why I'm here. Send me an email. Send me send me like a uh an email. Tell me you found this products that you're trying to buy. If it's a good deal, I'll let you know. Um, just ask someone. Don't make these decisions by yourself. It's going to be very expensive for your store in the future. So another thing that I wanted to talk about is don't get pressured by your sales reps into purchasing more than the business can handle. So sometimes your sales rep when i say sales rep i mean like your sales representative someone who is reaching out to you on behalf of the company so for example like um i don't know what <laughs> i'm lost i can't even think of a vendor sensational so let's say sensational that rep reaches out to you and they tell you um we have all these products and all these products you want to try it in your store um let me sell you know buy more i'll give you better deals and stuff like that um if your business can handle like i know if you buy braiding hair in pallets you get way 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 discounted price and like if you buy a box or two three boxes whatever if you do six boxes you get a certain price if you do 10 boxes you get another price if you do 20 boxes you get another price and then if you do like 32 boxes which is a pallet you get even better deal um this is how these korean stores do they they buy in bulk in pallets they get better deals but again like i always say you're not trying to open a walmart you're just starting out so don't feel pressured as long as your business can handle it that's fine that's cool do not get pressured do what your business can handle don't get into debt even before you start I want you to grow slowly i want you to grow step by step and if you have a good consultant i keep saying this because if you have a good consultant these are things that should not be happening if these are happening and you had a consultant i'm sorry but the next thing is giving into customers you're gonna be a little bit desperate <laughs> um lack of a better word but you're going to be a little bit desperate in your first first year of business you're trying to build a relationship with your clients you're trying to accommodate everyone some people will come to you with sob stories i've had it happen all the time in my store well not all the time really to be honest but there's those people like they'll come say hey please let me buy hair you know me i've always come here i really don't have money right now please 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 give me hair i'll i promise i'll pay you back no don't do it <laughs> don't do it you can tell them that you give them maybe 25% off and they'll pay you back that later at some point but 
at least if they pay 25 uh 75 percent of the actual product they're kind of paying the cost and a little bit of profit so you can if they never pay you back if they never show up it's fine that's okay if you end up uh, having braiders in your store they might ask you um, to lend them products like braiding gel braiding hair for their clients they'll pay you back don't do it i have a braider who actually ran away <laughs> after i lent them products so keep that in mind as well then if you have customers who keep you know if they know that you are lenient they'll never do this at a korean or asian store they'll never go there and buy things and pay later so why are you doing it at your store unless you have the services like like um kalana or shop now pay later kind of services then it's not really you get your money they deal with the lender right so it, it's out of out of your like you don't have to deal with that and i don't want you to be the store that people come to beg i'm telling you they will have money they'll go to the koreans when they don't have money they'll soon they're coming to you so you don't want to be that store that's known for that so don't do that you'll have people who say oh i've spent so much money with you give me something give me a freebie don't do that so when you're buying products from your vendors like product vendors like b sales and pk and ultra standard always ask them to send you samples and then if someone was to ask um for a freebie you can always give them the samples because those samples usually have an, a thing says not for sale if next time if this customer makes it a habit when they come back next time can they say ah oh, we don't have samples right now so they know you did not pick a product off your shelf to give it to them for free they know you have samples and when you have them you'll give it to them when you don't you don't don't be that store that gives away things <laughs> you bought it so why are you giving it away for free come on new store owners for any business this one applies to any business try and cut costs on essentials so you decide you don't want to pay for a phone you use your personal phone or you decide you don't want to pay for internet or you choose the lowest cheapest most unreliable company for your internet it's going to cost you long term that's what i did myself actually with internet but i did not know that this was a bad company to be honest with you i just took over the internet that the previous owner had and i just didn't want to go through the hassle of trying to find someone new i just thought you know this was working for them it's gonna work for me so i went ahead and just did it but it's been a pain i have had days where i could not sell anything because my pos system runs on the internet so if the internet is down that means i cannot check out anyone so you know at those times i'm asking clients like can you pay with zelle can you pay with venmo can you pay me with paypal can you pay me with cash app and sometimes they will say yes sometimes they'll say no and you lose money so do not cut costs on essentials like internet for me is an essential i cannot even imagine not having internet in my store another thing is store owners are scared to reach out for help so i don't know why you're scared to reach out for help because everyone needs help at some point in their life you know it could be in business family personal it could be anything if you need help please reach out for help and also if you need help for your business please reach out for help um i mean in terms of you know getting a consultant or even getting like freebie information for example right here i'm not charging anything on youtube so if you need help come on here write a comment in the uh, one underneath one of the videos i always answer those most of the time and um, i'm actually planning on doing a q and a session so um, if you have any questions that you want me to answer, leave them in the videos in the comment section and I will answer all those in one video. I'll do like a Q&A question and answer session. So ask, ask those questions. Come on, don't, don't suffer in silence. I think if your store is still new and you're trying to grow your clientele, reach out to your community. Um, go attend the church attend events in your area um you can check these events like at the local library or at the local um council like the, the city events attend those events and then if someone in your community is hosting um like a charity thing or like a give back to the community type of thing like right now thanksgiving time many people are doing like meals for homeless meals for women in shelter things like that go ahead and join one of those you don't have to give out money because you're still very new but you can create like a package of like hair care products you can put in like a shampoo conditioner mask treatment comb 
you know something hair ties just something and and have that be given to like um you know like they can do something with it like just contribute a few things um you can decide to contribute some braiding hair um just do something in the in your community so people can get to know you attend church in this community so that people get to know you and um just reach out to them let them know you're new you would like to get traffic and stuff like that come on i remember when we opened our store we went everywhere we were at walmart passing out flyers at the local malls local 7-elevens passing out flyers we were everywhere so do do it do not feel scared okay so that's what i have right now for mistakes that people do in their first year in business i'm sure there's other mistakes uh, happening i'm very grateful <laughs> that you guys are here and i hope that that video um everything that i've shared is going to help you not make these mistakes in your first year of business and i hope to see you guys in the next video bye bye